Well, hello and welcome, people of the internet, to Soulstone Survivors, a bullet heaven that's been out for quite a while. It's been in early access since November of 2022. A lot of you guys, if you play a lot of bullet heavens, have probably already heard of this one. I know that I had. It's kind of been sitting in my library. You know, it's one that I, I either picked up on sale or I picked it up in a, in a bundle from like Humble Bundle or something a while back and just have never fully gotten around to. Just kind of been... Uh, sitting there in my library rotting with all the other games that never get played. But uh, the past couple days, I've kind of been fighting a, uh, a respiratory bug of some kind. Uh, it's not been very pleasant, uh, but I needed a, I wanted a game to play. And so I figured, you know what, this is the perfect game to, to try out here. And I think this one is, is really sweet. Now, there are definitely things that I don't think are perfect, but I think this is a cool one to check out. We'll probably be playing this a couple times because there is a lot of stuff to unlock. There's a lot of different ways to customize your builds, and ultimately, it's pretty fun. And that's kind of the, the ultimate aspect here. So this barbarian here is yelling at us. He is the first character that you're going to unlock or be given. Actually, there's a lot of different characters here. 17 characters to be exact. I've unlocked six of them so far. There's different achievements you need to actually get in order to unlock some of them. Or actually, I've unlocked uh, seven of them. Uh, this guy's, or no, I haven't bought this one yet. He's kind of hiding down here. Uh, but they all kind of have the same visual style of like this really uh, hidden face with brightly colored eyes. But all the designs other than that are really cool. There's like a, where's the Death Knight? Yeah, you get like a Death Knight on a horse. Super cool. So we're going to be playing with the Barbarian here. Now, each different character also has four different weapons. So we're going to start here just to kind of show you guys what the, in case you haven't seen Soul Stern Survivors, what the beginning uh, kind of style of gameplay is like. Now, we will talk about how to unlock different weapons moving forward, but we're going to be starting here with the Barbarian and his Barbaric Cleavers. Now, each weapon comes with their own uh, beginning skill. So we're going to be starting here with Whirlwind, as well as different modifiers. So we're going to have less armor, but more area. And then the Barbarian himself, each class is going to have different stats. So like, these are our base stat changes. If we swap over here, you can see that there are different stat changes. There are also unique skills that you can unlock. So if we take a look at our skill list here, these are general skills. These are the skills that you'll be able to unlock in typical Bullet Heaven fashion while you're playing the Barbarian. But there are also character specific skills, which you will have to unlock. Uh, for example, this one, I haven't reached prestige level 50 yet. I think I'm level like 32 or something with Barbarian, and that'll just go up as you play. Uh, but then you can also see the weapon skills of each weapons. There's also different skins, which I have not unlocked yet. Uh, purchase all nodes. That's going to take a little while. That's quite a bit, but you get some cool little skins there. And now we can go ahead and jump in. Now you can kind of turn off. It looks like you can turn off like the character stats if you want to just be kind of flatlined. You can turn off your weapon stats and your central tree stats if you want to make it a little bit harder. There's also a rune system, which we'll go into after after we do our first run. I haven't unlocked that yet, uh, so I don't even know fully how that works. I kind of have an idea, but let's go ahead and jump into our first map. Now, the map system itself, at first, I was a little bit confused how it's working, but it's pretty straightforward. Basically, there are all your maps on the left side here. Now, you see a little 25% meter here, 100%, 100%. The way that each map works is when you see the first map. So we'll take a look at this, the frozen, the frozen wastelands. I have not been here yet. You'll see that there's no UI menu here that you see right here. Basically, you need to complete a map for the first time with no modifiers, which is what you see right here, 100%, and it's yellow. But then you see the one and two here. Basically, the way it works is you have these cursed tiers that you have to unlock. Now, in order to get to tier one, all you have to do is complete the map for the first time. When you complete the map, uh, you will have access to curse ones. Now, in order to get from curse one to curse two, you're gonna have to have four basically curse points active. Now that's why you see here 25%. When I did this the first time, I only had one active. So I only have 25% of this completed. Now I still need to go in with four active. So you can see here, there are different things like reduces all healing. We're gonna go ahead and do that one. We'll go ahead and do Captains of the Void. We'll do Wardens of the Void. And if we wanted to, we could also do this. However, because we've already maxed out our curses, you can see here there are bonuses on the right. It's not going to increase that any because we've already hit the cap. So there's no sense in doing a fifth version. Now, the minor soul stones, this is what we're going to be using to upgrade a lot of our meta progression. Prestige is what you're going to use to level up your character, although that does that automatically. 
and common minerals. This is what's going to be used to craft different weapons. Now you can see here each map has different properties, but it also has different materials. Uh, so if we went over here, you can see there are different uh, materials. Same thing over here. Uh, so basically, if there's a certain weapon you're looking to craft, you're going to have to go to a certain map and grind it for a little bit in order to get those materials. And so if you get your curses up, it'll go a lot quicker. So let's go ahead and jump in here. I know that was a lot of explanation. Now there is auto uh, auto aim and auto fire. Uh, I believe you can turn that off or you can override it just by holding the right mouse button. Although our attack here is completely area based. And so we don't really need to do anything. Uh, as for the UI, you can see all our skills down here. Our skills are auto activating our health bar. We have a dash. Dash indicator is a little small. It took me actually a little while to find, but it is this little diamond here below our character. If we dash, it goes on a recharge. Now, there are also buffs above our head. Now, each of our abilities, I'm going to just leave this here so that way you can read it for a little bit. Uh, you can see here, whenever we use it, we gain Bulwark and Finesse. Bulwark is going to give us additional block power. Finesse is going to give us the chance to multicast. I'm going to go ahead here. I'm just going to take the, the block power here. Just help us out a little bit defensively. So there are a lot of different buffs. Now I will say one of the one of the weaker aspects of Soulstone Survivors, and there, there's a couple, but for the most part, I've I've had a lot of fun. There's a lot of positives. Is the tooltips. The tooltips are not the best. There are definitely some buffs. For example, this is a perfect example. Electrified. Now it might say somewhere in the game exactly how this works. I have not found it yet. Ah, it's right there. So if you hit the more details button, somehow I never clicked more details on Electrified specifically. So basically, whenever you build up 20 stacks, it will use those 20 stacks to have a whole bunch of uh, little electro orbs fly around you. Uh, so never mind. I, I take that back. There are other things. Actually, you know what? Now that I say that, I'm going to have to I'm going to hold on to that thought. So I'm going to take the Bloody Saw here. We already have Finesse stacking with our Whirlwind. And so stacking Finesse is going to allow us to get that multicast even higher. So we'll go ahead and take that Bloody Saw. And so, you know, that that's one of the things that... Uh, I feel bad for now, now saying like, oh, there's this whole bad thing where it doesn't really tell you the tooltips. Well, it, it does. I just, you know, uh, for whatever reason... Maybe it's my sick brain. My sick brain was like, hey, there is a more details button. You, you just got to click it. Um, so I was thinking like, oh, well, I, I did eventually find out what it was. I had to go to the Soulstorm Survivors Wiki. And so there is at least the wiki itself is actually pretty good. It tells you a lot about the game, a lot of the different mechanics. Let's see here. Um, I think here I'm just going to go with the damage modifier. A little bit less move speed. That's totally fine. We have these little health pop-ups that come up a little every once in a while. Now, one of the things that... Um, here we're going to go with double slash because, again, we're trying to stack up this finesse. There are different uh, mini quests. So here's one of these materials that pop up. We just need to break it and we get those. And you should see... There we go. You see the pop-up right there so you can see what you've collected. Now, if you want to see, that will go away after a while. But if you want to see what you've collected... You can go right down here and see your total amount of materials collected. Now, there are multiple objectives that we need to complete here in order to beat the map. The first is eliminating Lord of the Void. We have five Lords of the Void we need to beat, which are just bosses. Uh, here, I'm going to take the area of effect. Now, the way that the skills work in this game are very, very connected to like auto battlers. For example, a lot of these skills have tags on them. So you can see the skill type. We have swing, area, and physical. Same thing here. Swing, lasting, area, physical. Swing, frontal, physical. So a lot of these area effects are going to specifically, you know, affect things with an area modifier. And you can actually see what skills are modified by this. Uh, it's a really good, it's a really good system. Uh, you'll also see things like for every earth skill you have, give crit chance to every thrust skill. Um, now, I think that these mostly pop up if you have, you know, kind of like two overarching themes, which is kind of what I've found is a pretty strong way to go about builds is really to have like two two different things so kind of focusing on one maybe two different effects so for example i'm kind of focusing here on finesse uh mostly because there's a skill i want to pick up um here we're just going to pick up the subdue uh damage based on the number of finesse decks and since we're building up finesse it's going to be pretty strong 
And here is our first Lord of the Void. So in order to fight for Lord of the Voids, we have to kill a certain amount of enemies. The first one, I believe it was, uh, what was it, 500, 450, somewhere in that range. That's going to keep going up every time we uh, we take out a Lord of the Void here. But we just kind of need to focus this guy down. Let's see. Let's go ahead here and go for the area of effect of our Whirlwind. That way we don't have to get as close to enemies. Let's go for damage modifier or cast frequency. We could go damage modifier, just flat damage on everything. I think I'm just going to go flat damage on everything here. We can just make our way up here, grab a little bit of healing. And here, hmm, nothing that I really care for. I think I'm probably just going to go with a chain lightning. One of the things I, I do really like is that if you're not crazy about the skills that you're offered, now I don't have any like banishes or rerolls available to me yet. Haven't unlocked that yet uh, in the meta progression. If you don't like the ones that are given to you, you can just overwrite them later, which is a really nice thing. Um, there will also be a pop-up down here that basically says skip active skills. So even if you select all, all six skills, you will still be offered skills and if you find the ones that you want and you don't want to switch them you just toggle it off and you won't be uh offered any seals if you want a different skill later just toggle it toggle back on let's go ahead here i'm going to take the area uh, area modifier on the whirlwind i don't really want to go for the damage modifier on the chain lightning because eventually i will be getting rid of this and so increase the area modifier for all your skills type frontal so you can see here we have double slash and subdue and if you also don't want to read, you can just ho hover over and it will tell you exactly, it'll highlight the ones that are actually uh, being affected. I think I'm going to take that, get the 40% chance, or uh, 40% area modifier. Not really crazy about any of these either. I think I'm just going to go with the lightning bolt for now. Since these are both going to stack up electrified, kind of work those together. Let's go ahead and go for damage modifier on the subdue. And we'll just kind of work our way around uh, mostly looking for, for the different materials. It's really the reason to move around. Other than that, there's not a whole lot on the map. Sometimes what can pop up is these. I'm going to take the Leviathan here. Additional 20% damage. We do lose some move speed, but that's fine. Um, event sometimes, I haven't figured out exactly how the system works, but there are, like, some mini quests that can pop up. So, that is one of the things that I haven't been crazy about, is that... They don't really tell you how to complete them. You kind of just have to figure it out for yourself. Now, some people will probably like that. Um, it's definitely more of an like old school gamer thing where the game doesn't specifically like hold your hand, walk you through everything. So, for example, uh, earlier this morning, I was getting a couple just kind of uh, kind of lazy runs in, and there was a like little heart circle on the ground. You break it, and all of a sudden. Cupid pops up. This is what I was going for. Scent of Blood temporarily increases your cast frequency based on how many stacks of finesse are present. So not only we're already getting finesse, which is going to increase our chance for multicast, but also we're going to be casting more times, more chance for multicasting. Let's go ahead and get the Chain Lightning out of here. Actually, uh, Chain Lightning is fine. I'm going to get rid of the Lightning Bolt here. Um, and so when I destroyed the heart, Cupid pops up and Cupid is totally immune. You can't hurt him. And there's these little heart totems that appear everywhere. Now, the whole goal is you're supposed to have Cupid. He'll, he'll kind of like fire an arrow towards you and you have to have him destroy the turrets. But nowhere that I could find was there any kind of, you know, like up here we have, take the damage modifier, we have different, um, you know, objectives. And this is going to keep updating whenever we kill a monster. So we have 450 left in order to clear the map. Uh, so, for example, here, there's nothing that I really want, and so since I don't want anything, we can just go ahead and replace choices with a passive power-up, which is also a really nice ability. Here, I'm going to take the multicast chance on the uh, the Bloody Saw here. That's a pretty, pretty good upgrade there. And so, I was going through, I was having, you know, Cupid basically attack me while I was on the other side of a tower, destroying them. But I didn't know, like, how many had to destroy. I didn't know... Uh, there was basically no indicator of was I progressing correctly in the quest or was I doing things wrong? Now, eventually, I figured out that you basically by going to a, a YouTube video, I guess it's an old event quest that uh, was part of like a Valentine's Day thing, I think. 
I'm gonna take the multicast chance here. Uh, basically, if you if you have Cupid destroy eight different turrets, you get an achievement, and that achievement basically gives you a new uh, active skill that you can use, as far as I understand. Uh, nothing here giving finesse. Uh, I could go with Sharp Spear. Gives more movement speed and gives more crit chance. Yeah, I'll take that over the over the chain lightning here. Um, I'll take the the cast frequency. So that was kind of so. And there there was also, for example, there was also one where there's a little like I don't know kobold guy that's stuck in stuck in a cage basically. You undo the cage and there's a blue symbol underneath him that says um and all well. There's a blue symbol underneath him, and as you walk around, there are little blue rocks that you have to pick up. You can collect, you can hold up to eight at a time, and each one slows your movement speed down. And you bring them to him. Now, I'm guessing there is a certain number that you're supposed to bring to him. I brought about 40 to him. Well, maybe. Maybe not exactly. I don't remember exactly how many, but it was definitely more than 20, let's say. And he never really did anything. So, I'm assuming that maybe I just didn't hit the number of things that I was supposed to do. But I kind of wish stuff like that would have um, some kind of indicator as to what your mini quest or your mini objective is. Now, let's see here. I think I'm just going to go for, for block power here. Those are really good. Don't really care for any of these. I am still potentially looking for something to replace Sharp Spear. I'm not quite sure yet. Let's go for damage mod. Let's go for... Every time you apply Bulwark, you have a chance to gain Appletude. How many things? I think it's only one that we have, two that we have that applies Bulwark. Um, yeah, I guess that's reasonable. Here, I'm just going to go Magnetic. I don't really, I guess I don't really care about Block Power all that much. Don't really care about these, so let's swap it out. Increase the area modifier for all your swing, which increase the area of effect. Yeah, let's take the uh, yeah, let's take area of effect. Let's take the Leviathan for 20% more damage. There we go. Um, now that also said, kind of in the in the same same line there as the objectives and some not necessarily showing up. Uh, a map is something that I'm surprised there's no mini map at all, especially when there's different objectives for some mini quests. As well as all the material. Now, obviously, you can just walk around and find different material. But if you're grinding, I feel like it would be beneficial to have a mini-map. Just so that way you could see where things are spawning on the map. Um, especially, like, with that with that Cupid mini-quest that I was doing. I kind of just had to wander around. There's no real indication of where the next, uh, like, heart tower was. And maybe there is a mini-map. I mean, be honest. During our Twilight Survivors run, it took me a about five episodes well because i bulk re bulk record i recorded like five episodes all at the same time and so then you know you guys were, were kind enough to let me know like hey you know that there's mini map right and uh yeah there was but i've looked through all the key you know all the key mapping i've looked through most menus and i haven't been able to find anything to indicate i've even i've even googled it right and so i haven't found anything on a mini map so if if nobody else has found anything on a mini map I i'm gonna go ahead and assume there is no mini map um, that being said, I'm not a big fan of like the mini maps where you have to pop them up while you're playing. I mean, there's plenty of space down here. You could put a little mini map, and I wouldn't mind that. Especially after playing games like uh, like Jotun Slayer and having a mini, mini map, that's been very very helpful. Um, so I think honestly, we're probably pretty good here. I'm gonna go ahead and skip these active skills just so that way we don't have to keep uh, hitting the passive. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and increase. Um. Let's just get a little bit more move speed. Just move around the map a little bit more. At this point, we can just kind of focus on gathering materials here. Because for the most part, bosses are just going to kind of melt here. Especially with all our... Yeah, let's go with cast frequency here. Especially with all our blood saws here. Just absolutely annihilating over time. Although our damage is kind of... Kind of piddling, to be honest. Let's go multicast chance here. Like, they will die. It's just, a, it's just a matter of how long is it actually going to take. Now, after each boss dies, they're going to drop a crystal. Definitely, definitely pick that up. Not only are you going to get some additional... I think bosses might give you some additional skill points. Um, I would assume so because, you, you know, typically after we beat them, we have some multiples. But they're also going to drop 
uh, these colored, these soul stones here. And the soul stones you need to either unlock different characters or unlock different things on the meta progression tree. You need a lot of them. So you need to make sure that you collect every single one. Because unfortunately, based, uh, the way I understand it, and this may change later on, but as far as I found now, each boss drops one of each color during your run. Now, there are ways later on with uh, curses that you can increase the amount of bosses that you actually fight during a run. So I'm assuming that that will help you out in order to collect more soul stones. It'll obviously make the game harder, but uh, that shouldn't be a problem after a while. Now, one thing I've noticed too, visual clarity. <laughs> Uh, this this game can get wild with its skills. This isn't even as wild of... I mean, this isn't even a wild build. This is pretty tame as far as visuals go um, and what I've gotten through on some of my builds so far. Uh, typically, especially if you're going for like multicast and area, which I'm kind of going for here with the Barbarian, you can have a lot of different stuff going on screen. So if you like that, if you like just feeling like you're destroying everything, this is a pretty good game for you, not going to lie. Um, there are different ways to uh, tone different things down. So let's see. Let's take the area effect. So actually, this is a pretty good chance. If we go into the settings, there's a lot of different things. So you can change, like, you know, how what damage is indicated. You can change damage numbers, turn those off. You can change damage number colors. So if you wanted to see specifically, like, how much is my bleed doing? How much is my burn doing? How much is my normal physical damage doing? You could do that. I have it set up just so that it's one number altogether. You can change like your health overlay cross uh, crosshair size. If you like to play manual, you can change the color, all that stuff. So there is a lot of different settings here to kind of help that visual clarity, uh, which I which I do really appreciate. Um, you know, especially with so many skills going on. Now, luckily, there isn't really any contact damage, so you don't really have to worry about like running through groups. Well, I should rephrase. You do have to worry about running through groups of enemies because they will attack you. But there's no actual contact damage. So walking into an enemy for like right there, you know, you're not going to get hit by that. Um, but typically, you know, if you get close enough, it'll trigger either like an area of effect attack, which you're seeing on the ground, all these red circles. Those can kind of be difficult to see, you know, when you have a lot of different casts going on, especially with these uh, blood saws here. It's kind of like red on red on brown. That's a little bit difficult to see, but there are other maps. Uh, for example, the, the second map after you unlock, uh, or after you play this one, uh, it's like a darkened mine, which is a bluish black kind of stone ground. That's a, quite a bit easier to see what's going on. Really, a lot of it kind of comes down to the maps themselves and what color the maps are. Ooh, legendary power. Let's increase the multicast chance of our whirlwind. That's gonna be great. There we go, and we have one left to take out. I'm going to go ahead and increase our area modifier of every... Eh, you know what? I'm going to increase our damage modifier. Let's go ahead. Yeah, let's just increase the, the damage modifier of our sharp spear. It's totally fine. It's a little bit more direct damage. So at this point, I'm kind of just wandering around, hoping that there's you know enemies around me that I can take out, but also collecting up those materials just to make it easier for myself later on in, in upgrading different weapons. Um, for the most part, uh, I, I can only speak for the first tier weapon because of only the hammers that uh, I was equipped at the very, very beginning of the episode is the only weapon that I've unlocked. Um, and it took me, I think it was like two, two runs to get the materials needed to actually unlock it. I'm not sure yet, although I would assume this to be the case that uh, those requirements would increase on the more difficult weapons. Although, I can't confirm that. Uh, obviously, oh boy, oh boy, I'm kind of stuck there. Uh, you know, obviously, you have different requirements in needing to level up the Barbarian in order to get them. And that's another one of those things that, for, for some people, I think is going to be a positive, and for some people, it's going to be a negative. So let's talk about it. In order to unlock different features for the class themselves, you do have to spend time playing each class to unlock its system. So, for example, um, sorry, just had a 
a complete brain fart. Is that actually true? Sorry, I, I I'll come back to that in the stats. Sorry, my, my sick brain is causing me to brain fart a, a little bit more. Um, I just, it's been like two or three days since recording and I, I just need to get some, some content coming out. So uh, luckily I haven't been coughing at all. Uh, this, uh, this recording, it hasn't, it's been only a little bit of coughing. I'm going to be honest. It's what started as what I thought was a pulled muscle in my neck slash shoulder has kind of developed into like the same pain above like one of my lungs, which is, I mean, it's not a, not a super great thing. <laughs> um, and for the, for the most part, I can kind of mitigate it based on how I'm either sitting or lying down kind of, which kind of sucks. It's been pretty hard to sleep. Because I can't really get rid of it if I'm lying down. Uh, not really sure what's going on with that. Might have to go to the doctor here in a day or so. But, uh, yeah, luckily the way I'm sitting right now and, and talking hasn't been, been too difficult on me in that sense. Alright, let's go ahead and take the, the damage. Actually, let's take the 45% damage modifier here. Nice, so there's our last boss. We can go ahead and these don't really matter. They can matter. The the last upgrades, you might think, well, I've already defeated the last boss. Why would I need to? So when you def when you finish a level, sometimes you will have three porters here available. Now, I don't know the exact timer. I think it might be 13 minutes that you get offered these two. These are basically ways to extend your run, and I'm assuming that it's just to get uh, more materials. I haven't been in endless mode yet, but this is uh, Overlord, over, Overlord. I don't know why that was difficult to say. Overlord mode, and basically it puts you inside a smaller arena that the, than the map we're on right now. And you have to do the same thing: defeat a bunch of elites instead of regular mobs, and then bosses show up. It is a little bit harder, but if you have a pretty good build, uh, it's a nice way to go ahead and collect more materials. Now, that being said, if you're working towards clearing maps, uh, so for example, like right now, this run with four with four curse, um, if I were to go into the blue right now, which just ends our run, it would say that I've cleared the map, I've cleared all the curses, and I will unlock tier two with curses. If I go into the overlord map and I die, technically I've continued my run and it will say that you failed your run. So if you're looking at unlocking curse tiers and you don't want to risk losing out that progression probably just go into blue um but if you're looking at just collecting materials it might be best to go into overlord although i looked up online and i couldn't really find a distinct reason to go into either of these over the other if someone knows specifically why one would be good over the other uh let me know down below in the comments again this is kind of one of those things where the game doesn't really tell you what it is you kind of just have to figure it out on your own um but yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the blue portal, which is going to send us on, going to give us our achievements here. We get our scorecard, which shows, you know, what weapons or what skills are doing the most damage, what we collected, all of our different times. Uh, so for example, this is the fastest victory with current curse intensity, although this is the only time I've completed it with four. Uh, I've been focusing on the other maps here. So yeah, that is the best that we've had. Highest curse intensity, I believe that is just in total, not necessarily, yeah, highest curse intensity on this map is four. Uh, you can also take a look at all your stats here. You can also do this in-game if you want to. And then you can see this is your prestige counter, so I'm now level 40 with the Barbarian, which is going to allow me to uh, unlock different weapons. Yes, that is, okay, that's what I was trying to, to mention when I had my brain fart in-game is that in order to unlock like different weapons for different classes, you're going to have to play the classes in order to get your prestige up. Because if we come back here, now we can start looking through all these menus. Um, so first of all, if we take a look at the characters, let's take a look at the spell blade, just because the spell blade looks freaking sweet. Um, the first weapon here, we already have unlocked. Now the second weapon hasn't been crafted yet. Hasn't been crafted yet. Okay, well that makes sense. Well, let's go ahead and go to the blacksmith. And the blacksmith will allow us to craft different weapons. So let's go ahead and take a look at our spell blade here. Now we've already crafted the silver spell blade. Well, it comes with it. So you have to achieve prestige level 10, 40, and 70 to unlock 
these weapons. So if you want to play with different weapons and unlock everything, you're going to have to play with each of the different classes. And that's kind of what I was saying is that I think some people will like this system because I think for the most part, uh, you know, all the classes are probably pretty sweet. I mean, I can't speak specifically uh, since I haven't played with them all yet, but they all look really cool. Um, and I also like the fact that, uh, you know, they do have some visual flair to them. You can kind of trade change them out but you can also see kind of how they're planning on building so for example you can see here this is kind of a swing i think this is a swing indicator right not necessarily area i think a swing which is indicating kind of what kind of build you're here with whirlwind versus earth damage electric damage and uh, what is that is it colossal damage or is it no it's not colossal damage it's um it's a different type of damage i, I forgot i'm still trying to learn all the different systems here but so if we take a look here at the barbarian uh, we can see here, these are the things that I'm going to have to collect in order to craft this weapon. So, I likely have not done the map here to collect... Hmm, I had done a little bit of tin, so there's prob it's probably one of the new maps that I've only played once. And I have not played this map at all. I think this is the one that we were talking about in the beginning, Scorching Valley. I think that's the one that I haven't done yet. Or maybe Scorching Valley? Which one is that? Hmm, it is that one. Alright, well, I'll have, to, I'll have to figure that out. That's kind of besides the point here. So, yeah, that's the blacksmith that allows you to create different starting weapons and also get different stats, right? Uh, these are the different stats on Skullbreaker. These are the different stats on Barbaric Cleaver. So it kind of gives you a different direction to go with your builds. Now, we also have... I'm going to skip over runes just for right now. We're going to go to the skill tree. Now, each character... Actually, I'm assuming... Let's let's go ahead and double check this real quick. Let's go back to the Spellblade. Back to the skill tree. Ah, okay. Well, that is beneficial. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was a different skill tree for every different character. That is good to know because I thought that that was going to cost me an arm and a leg in order to get everything done. Uh, there are these outer nodes, which you have to complete. Actually, let's go ahead and count these real quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, maybe not. I was thinking maybe each of these is a branch off for each individual class. Not sure yet. They're clearly attached to something, right? There's a line here. But in order to unlock all of these, I have to complete the entire skill tree, currently with 44 out of 94. Now, basically, I've done, as far as I know, everything I can, never mind. I was going to say everything I can that uses the minor soul stones, but I'm kind of getting to the point here, let's unlock as much as I can here, where everything needs the other soul stones, which is going to take a lot of beating bosses. Right, some of these I've maxed out. I can go ahead and do that. Oh, I don't have enough. Um, but some of these use a lot, a lot of the soul stones. Uh, so that's going to take a little bit for me to actually grind and unlock these. And then we also have the runic power. So this is the system that I haven't really, uh, I haven't played with at all yet. And the way it works is we have all of these runes. All of these runes, there's kind of different tiers here. So it kind of looks like these are already unlocked, but they're kind of just the different uh tiers of skills i suppose and all of these are unlocked behind different achievements now you can check what all of these are so for example i'm actually pretty close to this one i only have to unlock one more character i believe uh no i would have to unlock two more okay so that is system i haven't unlocked yet uh i don't have anything unlocked for it and even if i did i haven't spent 50 grand to unlock this system yet you can check all your achievements here and you know a lot of these are going to be you know your, your like weapon achievements different characters all that kind of stuff but there's a lot of different achievements here i've only completed 41 out of 340 to be fair i've only been playing for about four hours so i wouldn't expect that to be any higher than it already is um is there anything else that we need to talk about for our first time here I don't know. I think uh, I think this is a pretty sweet game, especially if you like having goals and, you know, things to work towards, things to unlock. I think that this is a, a pretty sweet game. Um, for some reason, I remember hearing like mixed mixed reviews about this game, although on Steam it is currently rated very positive with eighteen and a half thousand views, which is which is very good. What percentage are we at on that? We're at 90 percent. So pretty positive. But like I said, for some reason, I thought I heard kind of uh, kind of more mixed reviews than fully positive. But I think the game is sweet. You know, I do think that there are some things that 
could use a little bit of bump and improvements. I think that there are some things that I still need to fully figure out, right? Like the buff for Electrified. For whatever reason, I just not hit more details on specifically an Electrified active skill. And so I kind of created like this false idea in my head that some of the buffs didn't have um, certain details written about them. Now, if I actually go to the character, this is one that I wanted to check out here. So if I go to... Is it in here? No, I would have to get... Yeah, see, so like this is another one. Okay, so that is why I just need to go a little bit more into systems because, for example, Brutal was one that... If you, just, if you just look at this menu here, Brutal isn't listed anywhere. Obviously, you can see Colossal has an area modifier. For whatever reason, I just didn't think to hit more details. That's that's my bad. Um, just need to take some more time to look at that. And it tells you exactly what it does. So, yeah, th there's definitely a lot here. We're going to be playing this uh, a bit more on the channel, very likely. I think it's pretty sweet. Uh, like I said, it is a little bit tough to see what's going on at times. But... If you just like having super powerful builds and having the customization options to really play the way that you want to, right? There's so many different characters here. Uh, looks to be like a, a druid? No, probably barbarian style character. Uh, sweet looking rogue. We have the, the Roman centurion uh, engineer here. Kind of looks a little bit like Deep Rock Galactic Survivor. Um, cool little uh, Wukong, Wukong style character. The Death Knight here is super sweet. I'm very much looking forward to unlocking him. Uh, we have a, a Reaper character, which is super cool. A Myrmidon character, which is great. I wonder if these little guys are going to come into play. The little, the little, uh, what are they called? I was going to call them little gremlins, but they're not <laughs> gremlins. We've got like a Necromancer style character, likely. Uh, Pal Holy Paladin. What else do we have here? We have the Mage, Archer, Spellblade, which looks pretty sweet. Uh, oh, we got a bestest boy. Love it. Is he going to help us out? We'll have to see. And then we got the Pyromancer. Yeah, so some really, really cool stuff here. Uh, so, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of Soulstone Survivors. If you've been playing this one, let me know what your thoughts are on the game. Because I'm assuming there are people out there who have way more hours in this game than I do. Um, if you've got any tips for me, maybe not like spoilery tips, because I do want to kind of try and figure out some stuff of my own, but if there's any information that I got wrong, please let me know down below. Like I said, uh, thankfully I caught myself in this video with the electrified and brutal type stuff with more details, but if there's anything else maybe that uh, could have some more clarification, for the love of God, if there's a minimap, tell me now. <laughs> uh, but hey guys, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, you had some fun, maybe you learned something, which kindly smash the like button and subscribe. <coughs> oh man, that was the first one. I was so close to holding out. Subscribe to the channel for more roguelike action. Guys, I've been Ganyans. Thank you so much for watching. See y'all next time.